Hello, Anthony Fasano here from Pass the PE Exam. In this week's Pass the PE Exam video, I will be answering a question I get often from engineering students and recent grads. Should I take the PE or FE exam? If you are an engineering student, and this is something that you've been wondering about, then this video is for you. Remember, right now, at this very point in your life, you control the direction of your career more than ever. So it's very important to make the right decisions for yourself, and I hope that this video will help you do just that. Let's jump right in and start by defining these two exams. Firstly, if you're not too familiar with the two different exams, let me start by telling you a little bit more about each one of them. The Fundamentals of Engineering, also known as the FE exam, is designed for recent engineering graduates and students who are close to finishing an undergraduate engineering degree from an EAC, also known as Engineering Accreditation Commission, or ABET, also known as Accreditation Board for Engineering and Technology, accredited program. The FE exam is a computer-based exam administered year-round at NCAAS-approved Pearson View Test Centers. It includes 110 exam questions, and the exam appointment time is six hours long with about five hours and 20 minutes of that time being actual exam time. If you take and pass the FE exam, you have the choice after roughly four years of progressive experience as an engineer in training, or EIT, to then take the principles and practice of engineering exam, also known as the PE exam. The PE exam is the examination required for one to become a licensed professional engineer, or PE, in the United States, and is the second exam required coming after the Fundamentals of Engineering exam, created and scored by the National Council of Examiners for Engineering and Surveying, also known as NCEES. As a general rule, a professional engineer who has, number one, an approved four-year engineering degree, number two, four years of qualifying engineering experience, and number three, who successfully completes the eight-hour FE exam, is permitted to take the PE exam, assuming they have all their requirements in. That being said, you should confirm these items with your local state education board, as some states do vary on these experience and timeline requirements. You can register for the exam through the NCWES website at ncws.org. Now, let's look at some of the advantages of having that EIT certificate, which you get when you pass the FE exam. After graduation, your number one goal is to find a job, and creating a high-quality resume may land you a job with a good company. While you may think that excellent grades during school is good enough, this is not the only thing that engineering companies look for. Trust me, I used to help the company that I worked for hire engineers. Having an EIT certificate can differentiate you from other candidates when you apply for a job. The EIT shows your prospective employer that you are serious about pursuing your engineering license and advancing your career. One obvious benefit of taking the FE exam is that it is a prerequisite to becoming a professional engineer. If you plan on working in the engineering industry, getting your PE license is very important especially for civil engineers. Now, you may not be interested in getting your PE at this present time. However, it's better to take the FE exam as soon as possible, whether you ultimately need it or not. This way, if you decide to proceed, then you're already done with the first step in getting your PE license. The absolute best time to take the FE exam is before or immediately after graduation, while the technical content is still fresh in your mind. You are eligible to take the exam as soon as you are within six months of graduation. The individual decision to prepare for and take the FE will depend on a student's desire to keep the option open to take the PE exam after gaining the required work experience. Let's now take a look at what a PE license can do for you. First of all, Remember that many employers might require you to become licensed as a professional engineer or require it to move up in the company. Earning a PE license is similar to passing the bar exam for attorneys after law school or the medical board exams after medical school for physicians. Your PE license will set you apart, period. Obtaining this license shows that you have met all of the standards required of the profession. A PE license generally means a higher salary. 
Not always, but usually. A PE license can be a huge differentiator in the hiring process. If a company has to choose between several qualified applicants, one with a PE license or an EIT working towards his or her license, and one without, which one do you think they'll choose? A PE license gives you the ability to sign and seal drawings. Only a licensed engineer can seal plans and drawings. These requirements lead to more responsibility for the licensed PE and thus greater career potential. Please note that prior to signing and sealing design plans, you should get approval from your company and you should look into the proper insurance coverage. You can officially call yourself an engineer only if you have a PE license in some geographic locations. You can work anywhere in the country. Now, please note that you may need to transfer a PE license from one state to another, but that's much easier than retaking the exam once you've passed it. So when deciding whether to start down the path on your FE or PE exam towards that license, consider what each of these credentials can do for your future and what stage in the process you are at today. To end this one off, my personal recommendation would be to take the FE exam as soon as you can, whether or not you end up going for the PE. Because even if you don't, all you did was lose some study time. However, if you do decide to go for the PE, then you will be thankful that you already have the FE exam under your belt. The key here is that the PE license is tremendously valuable in many areas of engineering. You never know where you will end up. So it's best to take and pass the FE exam so you're then prepared to take and pass the PE exam. I hope you found this week's video helpful. In upcoming videos, I will solve some more PE exam practice problems and answer other questions from our subscribers. Pass the PE exam videos will publish weekly, so please be sure to click our subscribe button so you don't miss something that could make a substantial difference in your exam result. And please, ask questions and leave comments for me below this video and I will respond to you. Let me know if there's a specific topic you'd like me to cover or a question that you need answered. Pass the PE exam, we'll have you covered. I'll see you next week on Pass the PE exam.